um, let us start on the second module today. And so, we are going to talk about uh, something known as the immediate reinforcement learning problem, right? Or in sometimes people also call one version of it as a multi arm bandit, right? So, we will start talking about the uh, uh, immediate reinforcement learning problem today. So, all of you remember the setting for reinforcement learning, right? So, we are not learning from data, it is learning through trial and error. And uh, one of the things that we said was uh, you learn from evaluation. So, unless you do something, you do not get a feedback from the environment. And if you want to know what is the you know quality of a particular response, right? You have to try out different things. Let us say you are cycling, uh, right? You, you try to push with your right leg and you fall down, you get hurt. You know that that is wrong, but you do not know whether pushing with your left leg is the right answer because you fell down by pushing with the right leg or you still have to push with the right leg, but lean the other side while you are pushing. So, all of this you do not know, right? So, you have to try different things before you get the right evaluation that you are looking for, right? And then you can continue learning through this kind of a trial and error mechanism, right? So, that is the one of the crucial things about reinforcement learning, this kind of exploration that you have to do in order to find out what is the right action to take in a particular situation. Just like we talked about tic-tac-toe last time, right? So, I might tell you that you lost by playing a move, but you do not know what is the move to play to win. So, you have to try other moves to know whether you are going to win or not. And once you know how to win, right, you are going to keep playing that repeatedly so that you can keep winning more and more often, right? So, the first phase where you are trying different things to find out what is the right thing to do is called exploration. And the second part where you are, once you know what is the right thing to do, you repeatedly do it so as to get more wins, right? That is called exploitation, right? So, at the core of, you know, the reinforcement learning problem, you have this question of exploration versus exploitation, right? So, how long should I explore, right? And when do I know enough about the system so that I can start exploiting the system, right? How long should I explore and when do I know enough so that I can start exploiting the system? So, these are questions that we are going to look at today. And in the context of uh, uh, you know this explore exploit, we are simplifying the problem a bit. So, what is it we are doing? We are getting rid of the fact that you know you make a series of moves, just like in tic-tac-toe, you have to make five moves, right, before you know whether you win or lose. And in cycling, you have to cycle for a while before you win or lose. So, what we are going to look at is something called an immediate reinforcement learning problem, where you do not have this notion of having to make a sequence of actions or a sequence of moves, right? You make one move or you make one action, right? And you immediately get a payoff. The evaluation comes immediately. There are many actions that you can pick, right? So, you do not know what is the payoff for each action, but you have to try the different actions, right? You have to try the different actions and then you get a payoff for the actions that you try. Right? So, literally there is no, no notion of having to build up to a final move or something like that. All the temporal difference ideas that we spoke about earlier do not directly apply here. We have kind of boiled it down to the exploration exploitation dilemma. Right? You, you kind of boiled it down to the exploration exploitation dilemma where you are trying to figure out when to explore, when to exploit. And the exploration here is trying out different actions and you get a payoff and the exploitation is once you figure out which action gives you the highest payoff on an average, right? You are going to keep performing that action again and again, right? So, this kind of immediate reinforcement learning problems are formulated sometimes as uh, what are called multi-arm bandit problems or bandit problems, right? MABs is what it is called popularly multi arm bandit problems and they are essentially at their core uh, trying to solve this explore versus exploit question right so the again summarizing the explore exploit dilemma so you are trying to explore to find which actions are profitable in terms of getting a good evaluation or a good payoff and you exploit right and uh, you act according to the best observations you have already made and therefore that is exploit so, always exploiting might not be optimal. Why? There might be a better solution. You might have found out a sequence of moves that lets you win, you know, 40 percent of the games of tic-tac-toe that you play, 
right? But that might be another sequence of moves that let you win 100% of the game. So, you do not know. If you are happy with 40, you will not find out about the 100%. So, how do I know that 40 is the right thing to do? I might have to still explore, right? So, we do not know that beforehand. And again, always exploring is not going to be optimal because you may you will be doing wrong things. After you have found out what is the right way to behave, if you still keep trying out, you know, different ways of playing, then that is not going to work, right. So, this is this explore exploit dilemma. So, when do I stop exploring and when do I start exploiting, right. I should not do it too early and I should not keep exploring too long. So, this is the trade off that we have to look at, right. So, let us look at little bit more formally, what is the multi-arm bandit problem? So, the multi-arm bandit problem or the n arm bandit problem uh, is a setting where you have n actions, right. Sometimes these actions are called arms. In, 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 in one minute, I will tell you why that is the case, right. So, you have n actions, we will call them 1 to n, right. And each action, when you select it, you are going to get some payoff, right, which we call a reward, right. You are going to get some payoff or a reward drawn from some probability distribution. So, all of you know about probability distributions. You have looked at many, many different probability distributions. So, let us assume that each arm the reward is going to come from some Gaussian distribution, right. So, that is a, so let us say this is the reward that you get for arm i, right. So, this is r i, that is the reward that you are going to get for pulling arm i, right. And there is some probability distribution. And this is the, so this is, this axis is the r i axis, this is the reward you get for pulling arm i, right. And the mean we are going to call it mu i, right. So, that is the mean, right. This is a Gaussian distribution. So, uh, so whenever I uh, select arm i or action i, I am going to come here, right, find basically sample r i from this distribution. So, all, all of you know how to sample from a distribution, right. So, you have this distribution. So, I am going to say, let us say I generate some number say 0 0.3 and then I basically keep integrating from here until I reach, I keep integrating from here until I reach 0 0.3 and once I reach 0 0.3, that is the number that I am going to come back and say this is the reward you get for uh, selecting action i this time, right. So, every time I just select a random number like this and then figure out what is the uh, corresponding uh, uh, reward that I am going to get for selecting action i. And like that, for each of these actions that I could select, right, so that will be like r1, r2, r3, r4, for each of this there is going to be a corresponding probability distribution. So, we can think of those as Gaussians uh, to make it simple, right. For each one of these n actions, there will be one Gaussian, there are n Gaussians here and they will have different memes, right. So, mu1 to mu n. So, what does it uh, mean here now, right? So, arm um, i is going to have a, a reward uh, a distribution with mean mu i. So, that means that if I keep playing arm um, i, right, if I keep playing arm um, i, play like hundreds of times, I keep just, just keep selecting uh, action i. I mean, arms and actions I will use interchangeably here. Let us say I just keep selecting action i like 100 times or something. So, what is the average uh, payoff I am going to get? it will be something close to mu i, I mean that is that is that is basically what we know, right. So, if we take a lot of samples according to the Gaussian distribution and take the mean of those samples, right, take the average of those samples, you will get something uh, close to the mean of the Gaussian distribution, right. So, if you take a lot, if you, if you if you are selecting action i many, 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 many times, then at best uh, on an average you will get mu i as the reward, right, is that clear? Now, so what does it mean to say that I am doing the best I can? in this situation. It means that among all the arms 1 to n, I need to find that arm which has the highest mean reward and keep playing that again and again, keep selecting that action again and again and again, because in the long run that corresponding mu i is the, is the reward I am going to get and we are denoting the max, right. So, we are denoting the max uh, 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 mu i by this symbol mu star, right. So, the best I can hope to do in this situation is I can get an average reward of mu star because I cannot do better than that uh, unless I know something else about the arms which we do not, right. So, we are going to get maximum as mu star, okay. Is the setting clear? So, I have n actions and for each action I am getting a payoff, right, 
so sample from a Gaussian distribution right that corresponds to that action. So for each of those actions I am going to have a Gaussian with a different mean mu, mu i right and my goal is to find out which is the action that has the maximum expected reward and continue playing that indefinitely. Right? But it is a challenge right because if I pick an action right, and it gives me a reward of 0 and I pick another action it gives me a reward of 1 that does not mean the second action will always give me a higher reward than the first action it just happened in one sample right. So, I have to keep taking samples. So, we will we'll, we'll look at something a little bit more uh, uh, detailed in, in, in a couple of slides right. So, before I move on I wanted to tell you why we call this the multi arm bandit problem. So, why do we call this the multi arm bandit problem? So, I know if you look at the picture at the bottom right. So, these are the if you look at the picture there that is a slot machine right. So, many of you know what a slot machine is right. You put a coin into the slot machine and then you pull the lever and the machine eats your coin. I mean that is what happens mostly right. So, occasionally you know the three, three symbols there might line up and then you get some kind of a payoff right. So, that is the stochasticity. So, you have an action, the action is pull the lever. So, you pull the lever and once you pull the lever, sometimes you get a payoff, sometimes you get nothing, sometimes you get a huge payoff that is very, very, very rare right. So, it turns out that most often than not you lose money. So, on an average right, each slot machine actually makes money for the casino owner just from all the coins that people put in because the amount of money that they pay out is so small compared to the number of coins people put for pulling this uh, arm right and that is why these are called one arm bandits because they have single arm and then they steal your money right. And so, they are called one arm bandits right and um, so, what we are talking about are n arm bandits or multi arm bandits where instead of one lever you are going to have many different levers and each lever has a different probability of paying off. Okay, each lever has a different probability of paying off right and so it is not just enough to put coins and keep pulling a lever then there is no learning in a normal slot machine unless you learn to walk away right there is no learning in a normal slot, slot machine but in the multi arm bandit case you have to pull one of the n arms and your learning problem is to pick the one that gives you the highest reward in the long run okay that's moving on so your objective could be you know there are many many different ways in which we can formulate this problem first of all right. I am going to talk about two three different ways in which you can formulate this problem. The most popular and the oldest way people have looked at for solving this problem is to say that hey, eventually right I need to identify the arm that has the highest reward right the correct arm right highest highest payoff right which is basically the arm corresponding to mu star remember. So, we talked about mu star here right that is the one that gives you the highest reward. So, we are looking for the arm that corresponds to mu star ok. So, and it is ok if you get to that eventually I do not need to I do not need any other guarantees I just keep playing this right keep doing this for a long time eventually I get to that. So, that is essentially what we are looking for ok. So, we are looking to identify the correct arm eventually right. So, how do we do that let us uh, first introduce a, a, a small amount of notation here right. So, we have uh, uh, R i k right we are going to call this the, the reward you got when you selected the or when you chose the ith action for the kth time right R i k is a reward or a payoff that you get when you choose the ith action for the kth time. So, what does this really mean right. So, you let us let us think about the example that we had. Uh, in the uh, 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 new stories case right. So, we had like let us say 20 new stories. So, that means I had 20 actions a 1 to a 20 right. So, each story corresponds to an action. So, what is the meaning of picking an action? If I pick an action that means that I show that story to the user. When I pick an action that means I am showing that story to the user right. Let us say that uh, when a user comes to my page I decide to show the third story to the user. So, I am showing the user the third story that means I am picking A3 right. Now, in response to this the user can either click on the story right. 
in response user either can either click or the user can ignore the story right the user can either click the story or the user can ignore the story okay if the user clicks the story i'll take that as equivalent to getting a feedback of plus 1 because i need to convert things to numbers and if the user ignores the story i'll take that as getting a feedback of 0 okay now there are many users that are coming to my page and i keep showing different kinds of stories right when i show the third story for the fifth time to a user right so again the action i picked is a3 right but i am going to get r3 comma what is r3 comma 5 that is the reward or the payoff i'm getting for showing the third story for the fifth time in my experiments okay now this is going to be either plus 1 if the user clicks on the story or it will be zero if the user chooses to ignore the story right so that's basically what my r3 5 will be right suppose like this i have shown the uh, uh, um Uh, the ith story let's say i have shown the ith story n i times right for each one of these so the first one i would have shown n1 the second one i would have shown n2 times and so on and so forth let's say that for the i uh, ith story i have shown it n i times so far to the user okay so that's basically what the first line is telling you right so let's say that r i k be the reward that i get when uh, uh, r i k is the reward that i get when i select arm i or action i for the kth time okay now i'm going to define another quantity which we denote by q of ai so q of ai is essentially the the expected payoff or the expected reward i'm going to get for selecting action ai so if i select action ai on an average what is the reward that i will get okay now what is the true reward i get for selecting action ai to a true average reward i get for selecting action ai the true average reward for selecting action ai is mu i right like we saw in the last slide right so every action is the reward for every action comes from this distribution whose mean is mu i right so if i know the distribution then i know that the average reward for selecting action i is mu i but i don't know the true distribution right that is what we are trying to learn if i know the true distributions i'll just compare all the mu's and take the one which has the highest mu right so i don't know the true distribution i have to learn it from these samples that i am getting right i have to figure out from these r3 5s and r all the ri's that i am getting i have to figure out which is the best action to take so based on all the you know uh, uh, experience i have so far right all the actions i have taken and the rewards i have obtained so far i am going to look at what is the estimated average return or average reward for taking action ai so that is basically my q okay so how do i do that i, I look i first add up all the rewards i have gotten i add up all the rewards i get for taking action ai so i have taken the ni times so i add up all the ni rewards so k will run from 1 to ni right likewise i divide by the number of times i have actually taken action ai right so this is basically this will evaluate to ni so the the sum the sum in the denominator is ni right and the numerator i sum up all the rewards i get right so that gives me the estimated expected reward or estimated average reward i'm going to get for taking action ai right that's clear so i'm going to find a second quantity here which we call a star right so a star is defined such that q a star is equal to max over i right all the i right so max over i q of ai so a star is literally the action that gives me the maximum expected reward based on the rewards i have obtained so far okay it's a maximum expected reward based on the rewards that i have obtained so far okay so that's basically what this expression tells us q a star right so keep keep this in mind we'll come back we'll use this notation later right this a star notation we'll use later okay so how do i get this uh, uh, this q ai so one way to do it is to you know remember all the uh, times i got a reward uh, whenever i mean all the times i played uh, action ai and the rewards i got for playing action ai so as long as i remember that uh, then i can add it up and take the average 
but is there a cleverer way of doing it, right? I can do this as I keep seeing the rewards, right? As I play an action and I get a reward, just as I keep seeing this action and reward, I can continue to update the Q function, right? So, how do I do that? So, the expression for that is here, right? The expression for that is basically, so QK is the, uh, uh, the estimate that I have when I get the kth reward, right? QKAI is the estimate I have when I get the kth reward and RIK is the kth reward minus QK AI plus 1, right? Uh, sorry, QK AI gives me QK plus 1 of AI, right? So, what does this expression mean? So, we will see, see, we'll see in a bit, right? So, just give me one sec. Let me go to the next slide and we can write this out, right? So, this is the expression that we are looking for, right? So, we want to see what it means. So, first, let us introduce some simple notations so that we can come back to what we are doing here, right? So, I am going to say that x k bar, right? Let us take x k bar, right, is equal to some summation of the first k terms of a series, right. Right, x k bar is x 1, x 2, x k, sum of that divided by k, okay. So, now I am interested in finding out x k plus 1 bar, right. What is x k plus 1 bar? This is essentially x 1 plus x 2 plus all the way to x k plus x k plus 1, the whole thing divided by k plus 1, right. Now, this part of the summation, I can replace it by k times x k bar plus x k plus 1 divided by k plus 1, right. I can do that, right. This summation is essentially k times x k. So, I can replace this summation by k x k bar plus x k plus 1 divided by k plus 1, right. Now, what I will do is I will add x k bar and subtract x k bar. I can do that, right. I can add and subtract s k bar. Now, this becomes right. So, this becomes x k bar, I am just taking out the first two terms. So, that is x k into k plus 1, I can divide by k plus 1 that will cancel out. So, I get x k bar and then plus I have x k plus 1 minus x k bar divided by k plus 1, right. I can write it like this. So, if you think about it, so my x k bar is the average I have gotten for the first k samples, right. x k plus 1 bar is the average I get for the k, k plus 1 times I have taken action a 1, right. And alpha is k plus 1 and r k is essentially the last sample I get, right. And q k a i is my x k bar, that is the average I got for the first entries, first k entries. So, that is basically uh, 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 what we do here, right. So, in this case you can set alpha to 1 by k plus 1 that gives you the uh, uh, average or you can set alpha to be a constant then which gives you a little bit more complicated expression, uh, which is some kind of an exponentially decayed weighting, right. So, the more recent rewards that you get, get a higher weightage and the rewards you got uh, far in the past get a lower weightage, right. So, this is one of the uh, exercises I would like you to, uh, you know, try it out on your own, we will assign it as a problem as well, right. So, that is a very simple uh, expression, right. But there is a problem with this, okay. So, what is the problem? Let us say this is the way I am going to go about doing my uh, learning, right. So, what is the problem with this uh, uh, way of doing the learning? So, the first thing is, 
let us take some numbers, right. So, let us take some numbers. Um, let me need an empty slide, okay, there you go. I have an empty slide, I will come back and uh, show everything. Let us take a number, so some numbers, right. Let us say that I have two actions, I have A1 and I have A2, let us say there are two actions, right. And then, and they get, uh, so when I take A1, so I get a reward of uh, plus 1 with probability 0 0.8 and I get a reward of 0 with probability 0 0.2, okay. Now, let us say I say, uh, let us take, I take A2, I get plus 1 with a pro probability of 0 0.6 and I get 0 with a probability of 0 0.4. Let us say that is the thing, right, A1 is 0.8 and uh, 0 0.2 and A2 is 0 0.6 and 0 0.4, okay. Now, which action do you prefer A1 or A2? right A1 obviously, right, because A1 has a higher average reward, right, A1 has an average reward of 0 0.8, while A2 has an average reward of 0 0.6, right, you should prefer A1, okay. Let us see how the experiment will go. Let us say that at time, uh, when I am start the thing, right, I am starting the thing at t equal 0. So, the first action I take is A2, okay. the first action I take is A2 and then I get a reward of plus 1, okay. So, now here I am looking at what my q a 1 and q a 2 are to begin with. So, let us say I start them off with 0, right. And then I take a 2, I get a reward of plus 1. So, what happens to my q? And my q a 1 is still 0 because I have not taken a 1 and my q a 2 will become 1, right, because that is the, that's the average, right. I have just taken it once and so I get a reward, I get once. Now, I will come back at t equal to 1 right. What should be the action I pick? Well, you look at it, okay, q a 1 is 0, q a 2 is 1. So, I will pick a 2, right. Let us say I get a reward of 0, right. So, now what will happen to my q? My q a 1 is still 0, my q a 2 will become 0.5, okay. Now, I look at it, which one is get better? a 2 is better. So, at my next step also, I will do a 2, let us say I still get a 0, right. Hmm, okay. Now, what do I do at 3? Again, I will take a 2 because that is still higher, right. Does not matter how many ever zeros I am going to get after that, right. For a long, long time, I am going to be taking only a 2, right. For a long, long time, I will be taking only a 2 because it will take lot of zeros for the initial effect of that 1 to wash off. But remember, the probability of getting a 1 is 0 0.6 actually. So, I will keep getting 1s in the middle, right. So, I will never switch from A2 to A1. That is a problem, right. I will never switch from A2 to A1 because A1 is the higher reward, but just because I started by picking an A2, right, I am running into this problem. Now, you can argue, hey, why do not you start by picking A1, okay. Let us try that out, right. Let us say I start with A1, I get a reward of 0, I start with, then I look at it, both are still zeros. So, let me try A2, so I will pick it, get, get a reward of 1 and then I am stuck again, right. So, just because I tried A1 once does not mean that it is good enough, right. So, I have to keep trying A1, A2 multiple times, right before I am confident that my Q's are reasonably correct and I can just go with the Q that is higher, right. So, that might take some time for that to happen, right. So, so you cannot just say that I will do A1 some 3 times and then I will do A2 3 times and based on the average of those, I will pick A1 or A2, right. Unless you give a large budget, right. I do A1 a million times, I do A2 a million times and then I will go ahead and do it. So, something like that, right. So, we will we'll come to that in a bit, come to figure out how to, how to do that rightly in a bit, right. So, it is a challenge. So, what we have to do is make sure that you are trying to exploit, right. You do not want to ignore the Q with the highest, I mean ignore the action with the highest Q, you do not want to ignore that, right. But you also want to not completely shut down the actions which have a lower Q at a given point of time right. So, what we do is, right, we do something very simple, we do something called epsilon greedy, right. So, what is epsilon greedy? So, basically you look at the action, 
right you remember a star so basically you pick a star with a very high probability right you pick a star with a probability 1 minus epsilon where epsilon is some small number right typically epsilon is something like 0 0.1 or uh, 0 0.01 or something like that right so when i say i make pick it with a probability 1 minus epsilon that means with a 90% chance i'll be picking a star and with a 10% chance i'll pick any action it, that could be a star but it could be any random action okay that makes it easier right so with some like 90 percent chance when my epsilon is 0.1 with 90 percent chance i'll surely do a star and with 10 percent chance i'll do one of the actions not necessarily other actions one of the actions so that means that uh, suppose i have uh, say 10 actions right i have total of 10 actions right so with the probability of uh, 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 taking a star will be 0.9 plus 0.1 divided by 10 which is 0 0.01 right the probability of picking a star will be 0.91 okay so that's basically how it will work and the probability of picking any other action any of the other nine actions will be 0 0.01 so that's called epsilon greedy right that's a very simple uh, uh, way of doing things and uh, in many practical applications epsilon greedy works fine right many practical applications when you are trying to solve real problems with reinforcement learning and you want to pick uh, uh, what we call as an exploration approach right so these are all called exploration methods okay so when you want to do exploration methods right uh, 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 so you can pick epsilon greedy right that's that's the most most uh, easy one to do right now all of you are familiar with deep networks right so all of you did the course on deep learning and also all of you are familiar with things like logistic uh, regression and so on and so forth so you know this notion of something called a softmax so what does softmax do softmax essentially converts a set of values right into a probability distribution correct and the nice thing about softmax is it actually it doesn't matter the values that you are actually using for converting can actually be even negative right remember so suppose we have a, a you know problem where the rewards are always negative like you keep falling down you keep getting hurt right the rewards are negative right so your q could potentially be negative right and so if your q is negative i can't just say divide the q by the sum of the q's right so i can't do something like this i can take q k a i divided by summation over j q k AJ. right if i do that then i might have some negative numbers here therefore this might not even look like a probability in general i can't do this so we use the softmax idea where you take e power q k a i divided by summation over j e power q k a j okay so that's basically how we do this right so you could either use a epsilon greedy method right where you just take a star which is the best action so far with the probability 1 minus epsilon or to take a random action with probability epsilon or you can use softmax where you select the actions with the probability distribution that is somewhat proportional to the correct value estimate but in a softmax fashion okay. okay so moving on ah, before we move on there is this parameter here uh, called tau right so tau is known as the tau is known as the temperature parameter so the temperature parameter think about what happened right if my tau is very 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 large tending to infinity my tau is like 10 million right so and my q's are in the range of say uh, uh, minus 1 to plus 1 so i take a plus 1 value and divide it by a 10 million and then i can divide any other uh, you know zero whatever right and divide that by a 10 million and rise it to e power so those numbers are going to look very very similar right so if my, if my temperature is very very high this expression will reduce to being uniform right so the probability of doing action 1 will be 1 by n probability of doing action 2 will be 1 by n probability of doing action n will be 1 by n almost right there will be small variations but there will not be a whole lot right so the temperature is very high then my probability distribution becomes uniform right on the other hand what happens if the temperature is very very low right if the temperature is very very low then even small differences in value function will get blown up into say my temperature is 0 0.001 right 
right? even small differences in the q value will become large differences in the probabilities. Right? So, as the temperature goes to 0, softmax becomes more and more like greedy, right? you will always be doing the best one. And as the temperature goes closer to infinity, softmax becomes almost like uniform. Right, uh, uniform random uh, policy. So, so that way, by controlling the temperature, you can control how much uh, uh, weightage you want to go to the differences in the Q values. Okay. So, these are the two traditional exploration approaches, uh, either epsilon greedy or softmax. The nice thing about both is both epsilon greedy and softmax give you asymptotic convergence guarantee. So, remember, find the right arm eventually was the ask, right? Now, by doing this uh, epsilon greedy or softmax, you will find the right arm eventually. So, that is what we are saying. So, think about it. Right? If you think of epsilon greedy, you are always you know, have, have a non zero probability of taking every action. Right? You have a non zero probability of taking every action at each time step. So, that means as t tends to infinity, you will get an infinite number of samples of every action. I mean, you will get a lot more samples of the uh, greedy action than you would get of other actions, but still you will get an infinite number of samples for all the actions. And once you have an infinite number of samples, their average is ex exactly the same as the expected value. Right? And therefore, the q's will converge to the true q, the, the two, true mu, right? the q's, q's will converge to the mu and therefore, if you are greedy with respect to the mu, then you get the best action. So, so, asymptotically you, you, you guarantee that the q's converge to the mu. Likewise, with softmax also you have the assurance as long as your temperature is not going to 0, you have the assurance that you will be picking every action uh, uh, many, many times. So, as t tends to infinity, you will pick every action an infinite number of times uh, and therefore, again the same thing as in epsilon greedy, you have the convergence guarantees. Okay? So, what happens when you are actually doing this in the in 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 environment? Right. So, here is an example where there were uh, uh, I believe um, 10 arms, right? this is a 10 arm bandit right? and for each arm you are sampling the probability uh, from some Gaussian. Right? So, how the Gaussian is generated and everything is described very clearly in the book, you can look at the book to know how they are generating the uh, samples here. And uh, so, you have these 10 arms. And then you start off by doing epsilon greedy with the, with the approach that we described now with the, with the q approach, right? And then you learn very quickly, and then you kind of stop at around one, right? But then if you use epsilon equal to 0.1, you you, you learn a little bit more slowly. You are not learning as fast as epsilon equal to zero, but you are certainly converging to what looks like a higher value, right? Obviously, right? And look at epsilon equal to 0.01. Right, it's even slower than 0.1. It's 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 getting you know, getting fooled by some of the early successes and not doing that well. But eventually, it will catch up with 0.1, and believe me, after some time out here, it will go actually higher than epsilon equal to 0.1. So that's basically what happens when when you're looking at various uh, rates at which you are exploring while learning with the bandit problem. So, the second one is an interesting uh, 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 curve, right? This the second graphic that you see here uh, is essentially something that people use for bandits, right? But I will explain it to you because it will be useful for you when you do some of your uh, exercises later. So, the x axis as in the first case is the number of steps, right? How many times you have taken an action, right? And the y axis in the first case was the average reward, in the second case it is the percentage of the times you have actually played the optimal action, the true optimal action, right? not the A star, but mu star. So, how many times have you played the action corresponding to mu star? Right? So, when you start, right, everything is about 10 percent because there are 10 actions, you are uniformly at beginning you do not know anything. So, you are picking all actions at random. right? So, so at beginning you start at around 10 percent of the times you would have picked the optimal action. Right, and when epsilon greedy, right, kind of stops, right, stops learning. It's it's kind of almost converts to a solution here, right. When it's converts to a solution here, you see only about thirty-three percent of the times you are actually picking the right arm. You are picking the arm corresponding to mu star. Other times you are actually converts to something suboptimal, just like we saw in the example that we did earlier, right. So where you ended up with picking a two instead of a one, right. 
So even if you do some small amounts of exploration, sometimes you just get stuck. But when, when we did it greedily, we got stuck with A2. Okay? Something similar happens here. So you can see this here. And epsilon equal to 0.1 kind of goes up and it will converge to somewhere close to 90 percent of the times it will be taking the optimal action. So, it is not yet converged, it is it's only close to 80, but eventually it will converge to 90 percent of the times it will be taking the optimal action. While the red curve which corresponds epsilon equal to 0 0.01 is still doing a lot of learning, it is only about 45 percent, 50 percent of the times it is picking the right action. Eventually, it will start picking the right action. 91 percent of the times, right? Uh, sorry, 99 percent of the times. That is what the uh, epsilon equal to 0 0.01 says. This will level eventually go to 90 percent on the y, on the y axis. It will go to 90 percent, while this will go to 99 percent. So I, I strongly uh, urge the uh, the students to look at the uh, description of how these curves were generated from the textbook. So we'll come back later to it in another session, but you, uh, you really have to look at how these were generated from the textbook uh, because it is very important that you know how to do these graphs in the future.